team. Aqua Teen Hunger Force colon movie film for theaters. I remember when I watched the show back in the mid 2000s. Admittedly, it was one of the stupidest things that I've ever seen on television. It's the kind of show where all sense and logic and continuity are thrown out the window just to purely emphasize on the random comedy. However, as stupid as it is, I'll give it that it's not reality show stupid. The one reason why I kept watching it was that it was hilarious. All you do is turn off your brain and just expect the unexpected. I will say though that I was more of a casual viewer. I didn't go out of my way to legit buy the seasons on DVD or even went out to watch the movie during its release. In fact, I don't think it was even out near me since it did get a limited run in theaters. But now that it's time for me to face the feature, will the movie be as big as its title or will the stupidity simmer a lot more in the film? Let's find out. The story. Or a better way to put it, the moments that contain some sort of story. It's complicated, but allow me to explain. The movie does follow a plot where the team tries to assemble an exercise machine called the Insanoflex, but it then turns into this giant robot that destroys the town and they have to go and stop it. At the same time, it also looks into the origin of the characters and how they ended up being made. It might sound interesting at first, but the movie has this very strange attitude regarding to sticking with the story. The best way to say it is that the movie consists of one half that's trying to tell the story mixed with the other half that rather wants to do something stupid that leads to nothing. This results in the film with this weird tempo where it feels like it might go somewhere, but then it would suddenly stop for what seems to be no reason. I never tire of it. You can't get women uh, trying to do me. Well, I think they pity you. However, knowing the show, the main focus is not necessarily to tell a story or to go deep into the development of the characters. If anything, this is all about the humor, the surrealistic moments that get people laughing by the unexpected nature of what just happened. Like the TV show, the movie largely consists of these gags, and it can vary on how effectively funny it can be. Some jokes would work out well, while others tend to drag on which would result in the pacing to get slowed down without explanation. If there's anything that I could give it credit for, as a movie based directly on a TV series, it does stay true to the spirit of the show very well. So much so that some may argue that it does it too well. It does have a feeling that it could have been just a regular 22 minute episode, but the creators decided to extend that plot into an almost 90 minute feature. Yes, some could argue that the look into their origins would make it more movie-worthy, but even at that, it doesn't seem to care enough to explore deep into it. I suppose for what it is, the story does achieve what it wants to do, if I could figure out what that is in the first place. The Animation As, um, interesting as the show is with its humor, the same can be said with the animation. It's not easy to describe the animation style, but here it goes. Imagine the original Scooby-Doo series if it were done in the modern era. Instead of using traditional cells to create their limited animation, they would use Flash with repeated use of small proper handmade animation. As a film from a TV series, I don't blame it for incorporating that style. In fact, despite having some of its cheapness showing, there are still some elements that can be visually admirable. These include the character designs that can range to a more realistic edge like with the human characters, or on the opposite side with a variety of surrealistic looks, rather it be from the Aqua Teens themselves, the Plutonians, or even the Moonanites. Also, whenever the characters do move through their actual animation, it does result in some nice looking movements that are pretty smooth. You could tell that the people at Adult Swim are talented, they just don't have the budget which is why those handmade movements are rare to come by and frequently repeated. However, as a movie from a series, there must be something that it does to elevate its animation quality to know that these characters have made the jump to the big screen. Well, like I said before, a lot of the movements in the film could have easily been done in the TV show and it wouldn't make a difference. But there are a couple of standout moments. 
One is with the Insano Flex. Although rather simplistic when it moves, there are some moments like the transformation scene that do give Aqua Teen fans a special visual treat. The other would probably be with Dr. Weird, who has a more prominent role here than he would in the show. I wouldn't say that this is great animation for a movie, since it still looks like it came out of television, but this wouldn't be considered bad either. The Characters Unfortunately, the movie's biggest downfall as an adaptation from a TV series is that it doesn't give any of the characters a new lair that would help present more of who they are. What makes it worse is that these aren't the most developed characters either. So what you got here is an entire cast of one-dimensional characters. Rather it be with Frylock as the brains, Shake as the lazy egomaniac, Meatwad as the dumb kid, and Carl as the sarcastic neighbor who ends up being tangled in the Aqua Teen's mess. Also, many of the recurring characters come back here and their roles on the film may differ to how important they are or how much do they actually contribute to the story. Some actually play a big part, like Dr. Weird and his assistant Steve, and how they connect to the Aqua Teen's origins. Some, like the cybernetic ghosts of Christmas past from the future and the Plutonians, have a role in the film that can be rather questionable if they actually do have a point to all this. And then others like the Moon Knights and MC Pee Pants are just there to make random jokes. I can guarantee that the movie would still be the same if you took off those guys from the movie. Technically, there are a few new ones as well, like Time Lincoln and Walter Mellon and his sidekick Neil Peart, the drummer of Rush, but again, they have no point to this. Now, it may sound weird that I would say that the characters don't have much depth into them, especially with the side plot of their origins with Dr. Weird. Honestly, it could have really given the film great purpose as an Aqua Teen movie, especially with the addition of Chicken Biddle, but they screwed it up at the end by constantly contradicting itself and just finished the movie like that. It missed the opportunity to give more depth to the characters, which was honestly something that they needed. Aqua Teen Hunger Force call-in movie film for theaters is simply a 90-minute episode of the series. As a movie by itself, it ends up being weak with an on and off story, cheap animation, and a cast of one-dimensional characters where some of which don't even contribute to anything in the film. But as an Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie, it does get the job done by providing a large dose of the show's random humor. I can only recommend this to people who are fans of Aqua Teen. It's the kind of film that you just turn off your brain or grab a drink with friends and enjoy the ride without asking any questions. If you're gonna come in expecting an actual movie, then you might end up rather lost and confused about what you just watched. Trust me, this is one of those films that you have to leave your brain out the door because thinking in general would ruin the experience. guys, this is Animat, and if I may take a moment to be very honest with you guys, out of all the animated films that I have seen, Aqua Teen Hunger Force call-in movie film for theaters is easily one of the hardest ones I had to go and review. And I really am serious when I say that, because the thing with Aqua Teen Hunger Force in general, it's like I said in my review, you're not supposed to think when you're watching it. It's the kind of show and it's the kind of franchise in general that you're supposed to throw your brain out the window, don't ask any questions, and expect the unexpected. So when I would watch this with an analytical eye, it's really tough to determine how should I take this? Because the whole thing is completely messed up, and it tries to focus on being so surreal 
and mostly trying to tell these random jokes here and there, it, it's easy to say that it's not really like most other movies that I have seen. It doesn't really try to be a movie per se. It's mostly a 90 minute episode of Aqua Team. And of course, most of it doesn't make sense. A lot of it doesn't connect with one another well. It's just how it is. That's just how Aqua Teen Hunger Force is in general. Now, some may argue how it would translate into a feature film, and like I said before, as a movie in itself, it's not necessarily strong, but that's how it is. This is how Aqua Teen Hunger Force is, and that's mostly why I can't really be mad at it, because, well, it's an Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie, and it serves its purpose, and it's made for that kind of audience. And that's why I can't really be mad at it, because it's an Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie. Not necessarily a good movie, but it's meant for a specific audience. And probably, if I were my past self in the er, in like the mid-2000s, I would have probably enjoyed it while I was binging Aqua Teen Hunger Force. But trying to look at, look at this as a film critic, it's something, well, no pun intended, it's a bit hard to swallow. And maybe I'll watch it again just to enjoy it for what it is, like try to have that right mindset to see it. Maybe hang out with a bunch of friends, like, so we can all enjoy the stupidity together. But yeah, th all in all, this is just the kind of movie that you're not supposed to think. And I don't think I'm doing the right job by analytically criticizing a movie like Aqua Teen Hunger Force because it's not made like that. But anyways, uh, now that that movie is done and I finally have reviewed it, it's time that we go and we move on to the animation hat. And uh, one more thing I would like to mention, if you guys would like to suggest an animated film you would like me to review and that I would put into the animation hat, then all you have to do is write me an email at animatesreviews at gmail.com. Okay, so with that said, let's go and check out what's the next one. And for sure, oh, okay, hold on. There, I grabbed two and then I end up with one. Now the one thing I will guarantee, the next one won't have a long title like Aqua Teen Hunger Force Colin Movie Film for Theaters. But with that said, the next one shall be... Oh! Oh! Huh! Okay, oh, well this is actually really interesting. Well, the one thing that's actually pretty unique about this is that I've already looked into a Chuck Jones movie. So now that I've done uh, Gay Paris, it's time that we go and take a look into the other one. Did I drop my... hold on. Oh, there it is. Sorry, dropped my paper. Oh. Oh, that's neat. <laughs> 